How you doing? I'm Shadi NYC, photographer and owner of LR2 Studio. What's this? Plastic packaging for a t-shirt, you say? Not exactly. I'm gonna show you how to take this and other things you can find in your studio and turn them into high-end pieces of equipment that'll transform your images into artistic masterpieces. Oh, look at that! Yeah, there you go. We're gonna do another portrait session today and I have Sean in the studio with me. We're just doing basic portraits, but what I like to do is find different items around the studio that can give a little bit of uniqueness into something that's, you know, mundane. We have a plain gray background, so we're gonna try to see how we can spice it up. We're gonna show you how to take this and use it with your camera and lens to make an interesting shot. So what I do with this is I'll pre-focus on the subject and I'll put this over the lens. We get light textures and patterns and then we also have some visual artifacts coming from the plastic that give a really nice texture to the photo. Kind of looks like a sun streak and whatnot. Looks really vintage. Something that's kind of like a toy camera or older camera that just gives that quality. So it's, it adds like a certain nostalgia to the image and I, I really like that. So right now I'm shooting with the GFX 100S and the lens that I have on here is the 120 millimeter macro. I'm using a macro lens because it'll allow me to, it'll give me more diversity when I'm focusing. Um, I'm able to focus really, really close. And if I have elements in front of the lens, I may want them in focus, I may, I may not want them in focus. So the macro lens is the, is the best fit for this. All right, so the next thing we're gonna be using are V-flats to create a very shadowed, kind of cool effect. What we're doing is we're taking this one light, which we have is the Profoto B10X, and we're shooting it straight at the subject, at the model, and we're using the edges of the V-flats to create a wall, which will give a shadow on both sides of the model. Yeah, there you go. So I'm shooting with the GFX 100S and my favorite go-to lens for portraits, the 80 millimeter 1.7. This lens gives enough versatility so that I can get in close and I can do medium shots, even close-ups, but also I can back up and get a nice full body portrait with it. If there's no available light, I can really open up the aperture and use whatever is available in terms of light and I don't always have to use a flash. Right now I'm shooting at f11 though. Being that I have a studio flash is giving out a lot of power so that allows me to kind of close down, make sure I get everything in focus since we're doing full body and we really want to focus on the model. Wide aperture is cool but not always called for and if you have a lens that can do both, perfect. So shooting the light through these V-flats creates a really cool effect where we have the subject lit and then we have just a visual element of shadow on the side which creates a very cool pattern and it just adds some extra interest. That simplicity has a nice elegant effect to it. So it doesn't really take much. If you don't have V-flats, you can use anything that has a sharp edge and just place it you know, in proximity to the light. It's always good to have some type of cardboard surface, white surface, you can use these for bounce, you can use these as a surface to put stuff on. If I wanna create like a little sliver of light, there's some gaff tape that I have on here. I just peel that, and then there's a little window that light can go through. So all you need is cardboard and a razor, and you've made yourself a gobo and saved $200. We obviously know about gaff tape, very expensive tape, but it's a lifesaver. It's probably the second most important thing on the set besides the actual camera and the lights. Next to gaff tape, you know what this is? This is cinefoil. You know what cinefoil is? It's basically aluminum foil coated with black matte stuff. I don't know what they used to coat this with. These are meant to withstand heat, so that's what's really good about them. I went from having a very wide spread of light, kind of uncontrollable. And as soon as I place this on, I can create a little beam of light. And I can really use it however I want in order to manipulate the light and get it to fit perfectly on my subject. Always stay curious. So I was just over by the steamer and then I found this funnel. So we're gonna take this, put it on the centerfold with the light and then see what happens in the picture. Yeah. 
So for these images, I'm shooting on a relatively low ISO with a high f-stop. Reason being, I don't want a lot of light. Because I'm having a focus light, I don't want there to be a lot of light bouncing around the image, and I just want the light coming from this flash to be focused on the model's face. You could definitely do this with a continuous light if you needed to. It doesn't have to be a flash. This is Big Les. She's the big mama plant at LR2 Studio. The number one prop that is without fail is a plant. You could throw it in the image with the subject. You could have pieces of it. Just showing the simple elegance of how you can throw in a plant into the background and it takes the photo from being plain and adds another viewpoint. What we can even do is place the plant in front of the camera lens and kind of use some of the branches as a foreground. So we're gonna try that next. I'm on 2.8. It's allowing me to make sure that she's in focus and the plan is kind of soft. So it's in the frame filling it up, but it's not drawing a ton of attention to it. Yeah, you could use pretty much anything. I think it's definitely worth a shot. So I would love for you guys to try different things around your house and let me know some of the things that I'm not speaking about that you could shoot through. I want to add stuff to my repertoire as well. So I hope this has been a reminder that you are limited only by your imagination. Take anything, stay curious, find random objects, and challenge yourself to find different ways to use things that you would never think about using. If you enjoyed this video, definitely check out the rest of the videos from the other series and leave a comment down below to let me know what you think and also what type of props that you're using around your location.